Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the BMW 2 Series Grand Coupe and uh, straight away we are going to be opening the engine bay of this car. Now you guys might think this is a small looking car. Oh my god, that was so easy. It says twin power turbo BMW badging right there and you can hear a bit of it. Of course, we've got insulation right there and this paint shade is really very rad on this car. In fact, it gets the new BMW grille which is not really big. And of course, it's an open grill. It does not open and close like some of the other BMW cars. Now, this is an empty spot here. You get front parking sensors. You get an air curtain here, which is actually active for aerodynamics. Of course, this is the fog lamp of the car. This is the headlight, which is an all LED unit conforming to BMW's new design language. Looks really nice. In fact, it even says BMW LED right here so that you don't get confused. Car looks mm, nice at the front. But you know what, from the side is where the coupe design kicks in here because uh, the roof line is sloping and uh, if you have seen the 6 series GC or the 8 series GC you would be able to understand the design direction here. GC means Grand Coupe of course and uh, this is the M Sport actually it also comes in Sport line which gets 17 inch wheels. The M Sport obviously gets really not practical, impractical or whatever you want to call it 18 inch wheels. The size of the tyres well it happens to be 225 40 18s yeah that's an overkill the size i mean the profile is really very low the wheels look really nice m badging right there m badging here as well and in the night it actually projects bmw on the road from here so yeah the paint shade looks super awesome on this car looks lovely okay you can see that black treatment lower down ground clearance is low however the problem is there's no request sensor which is a pain in the rear at this price, no request sensor, like really you have to open the car with the key of course. Okay, you've got uh, these uh, massive uh, panoramic roofs sort of, not really massive if you compare it with SUVs. Okay, shark fin antenna and this is sloping completely. Meanwhile, okay, you see this mud flap how it's done, well, it's kind of cool, parking sensors. But you know, as much as I love the car for how it looks in certain areas, the overall design might remind people of some smaller mass market cars as well which is kind of disappointing the edge shape lights look really very nice and those dual exhausts are right in your face okay this is not by any means a fake exhaust yeah these dual exhausts are not fake you get parking sensors at the rear you get a reverse parking camera as well this is the fog lamp the rear fog lamp 220d will remind you of the e-class bmw logo and that black treatment in the center connecting both the lights that's also kind of cool however this is fake af yeah this is fake unnecessary why do they even do such a thing i honestly don't know okay coming to the other side of the car well it's the same as the right side is the same as the left no request sensor but from certain angles like this angle it looks really very nice now what you're going to do is we are going to be opening the boot of this car press a button here and this is the boot well it's not the biggest in terms of size i think 430 liters and uh, the loading lip is also kind of narrow Below here you get the spare wheel which is obviously not an alloy which is a smaller size tyre in fact the tyre size happens to be 125, 70, 17 no alloy but at least it's under the floor and not on top of it you get the toolkit and a lot of sanitizers on the right side along with the manual there and what is here? well there must be some fuse box or something that is the safety kit or you can say the first aid kit of the car warning triangle kept here in fact I need to show you another thing the rear tires are actually slightly bigger in terms of size. Not really, they're the same size tires, 225, 40, 18s. This is a front wheel drive car, so it doesn't need bigger wheels at the rear. But this size is actually decently big at the rear as well. Now, here's another cool trick because this is, of course, a Grand Coupe. Here you see, frameless windows. Yeah, that's right. So every time you open it, it comes a little down and then it goes up. Yeah, frameless. This is so freaking awesome. I'm going to put the window down. but. This does not do, go completely down, but it's frameless, which is super duper cool and super duper awesome as well. Now, the build quality of this car is really very awesome. Yeah, very impressive a build quality. It will not make you feel that this is a cheap BMW, even though the pricing is not cheap, the positioning kind of is. So, there is storage space here, plenty of storage space on the door pockets as well. And you get this anti-microbial plastic cleaner on every door, which is not part of standard kit. 
Okay, this is where the ambient light is. So funky treatment has been given there. Now the seats look nice, but they're not the most comfortable because while the recline angle is fine, the problem is, you know, the car is firstly extremely narrow, which means that you really cannot seat three people at the rear at all. And under thigh support is, oh my God, it's really very poor. Although legroom and e room is fine, scooped out seat bag, magazine holder, AC vents and two USB-C charging sockets as well. Okay, headroom is not that great. Although they've scooped out the roof, but my head is like touching, touching types. Okay, you see, this is from where they've scooped it out. But headroom is not good at all for tall passengers like me. No height adjust for the seat belts either. And uh, there is sort of a hook here. Meanwhile, there's a light placement in the center. Again, you get a hook here. There's no handle to hold on to. And you get this quarter glass as well. Now, all the three headrests are adjustable, which is a nice touch. And 60-40 split seat. So if you want to increase the boot carrying capacity, you can do that as well. You get a center armrest, which is essential. You know why? Because obviously there's a hump here. Three people cannot sit in. No, it's impossible. The cabin is only not wide enough. And here you get twin cup holders as well. That's kind of cool. All the seat belts are the regular kind, which is a nice touch as well. And you see how it's been scooped out here. Well, that is just to improve headroom, but it doesn't really do a great job of doing that. Okay. You can actually recline this to access the boot as well. Okay, this is not a 60-40 split. This happens to be a 40-20-40 split, which makes it even more practical. But the car has only, only, yeah, remember this, only six airbags. Yeah, doesn't have seven airbags. Yeah, you see this treatment is really nice. In fact, you see the dashboard also, you get this funky treatment. It remind you a lot about the 3 Series, which is again a good thing because the 3 Series' quality is really nice and faultless. Coming to the front, first and foremost, we are going to be opening the windows so you can see how great... The frameless doors look on this car. I think this is the party trick. And these are the controls for the power windows. This is to control the outside rear view mirrors. This is to lock and unlock the car. Again, door pockets are big enough at the front. Both the front seats get electric adjust. Memory function, you can save up to two people setting. Is there memory function there? There's no memory function on that side. But again, it gets electric adjust, which is a nice touch. Now, here is the frameless door, which looks super cool and super awesome. I'm telling you, this car is going to be selling for its looks alone, although looks are a mixed bag, some people like it, some people don't. But definitely frameless doors will make it sell well and obviously the Grand Coupe design will obviously work really well in its favour actually. It says M right here, so it gets that as well. In fact, M colours on the carpet too, proper dead pedal. These are the controls for the headlights, it obviously gets automatic headlights. Oh, seats are comfortable at the front, very comfortable at the front. You can increase the under thigh support like this. So under thigh support isn't an issue. And once you step inside, you realize, okay, I love this. I absolutely love it. Let's close this. Obviously, one touch up and down for all the windows. Now, the dashboard looks really good. In fact, quality levels are also really nice. No, not much hard plastic as such. The lower half, yes, you do get hard plastic. The glove box is decent sized. It gets a light inside as well. Meanwhile, you get this dual tone treatment. So black along with beige, along with this beautiful finishing, which actually you can change colors. There are six colors for the ambient lighting. Six colors is a touch too less. It's just 58 lesser than what Mercedes offers in its own cars. Now, there is this holder for the mobile phone, which is obviously also doubling up as the wireless charger of the car. Twin cup holders right there. There's a USB socket here. Now, this seems to be a proper USB socket because behind you only get USB-C. There's a 12 volt charging socket, which is useful for people like Neha because this is actually a cigarette lighter here awkward moment in fact that reminds me there's a secret cigarette storing compartment as well here below the rightmost ac vent this is the headlight leveler of the car because this is the m sport it gets the m badging on the steering wheel which improves the performance of this car by zero percent steering wheel is nice to hold chunky in the center these are the controls for the cruise control these are the controls for the audio system and to browse through that instrument cluster now this instrument cluster is the new bmw language design language which I honestly don't like because it just feels too finicky. I love the old ones, the classic BMW dials. Oh, we miss you so much. And here you can browse through a lot of information. So yeah, I mean, multi-information display. You can press this button to browse through all that and more. Yeah, you can go previous track. You can go front track. You can do all that. It gets voice commands as well. The quality of the paddles is really awesome on this car. Automatic wipers as well. So you see plenty of spray on offer there's a lot of spray wipers work brilliantly well on this car auto dimming inside your view mirror lot of lights here as well you see plenty of lights in fact here you see there's a mirror and a light same is the case here as well there is a mirror and a light too meanwhile below the front center armrest there is actually storage space along with another usb-c charging socket 
and you get all the controls here but before that let's open the sunroof of the car now it's big enough it brings in a lot of light and feels airy as well now this is a dual roof or you can call it a panoramic roof obviously only the front part opens so we're just going to open the front part right now now once i press it it opens to a certain extent and you have to press it again to open it completely yeah that is how much it opens and from here you see you get a good view of what's around if you hang your head out which is not safe to be honest okay let's shut this now this is a 10.25 inch screen which is very fluid very nice and fantastic as well meanwhile let's just finish the cluster so here are three buttons eco comfort and sport eco pro comfort and sport actually which changes the console how it looks the instrument cluster of course so this is how it looks in sport mode this is how it looks in comfort mode yeah there is not much difference between comfort and sport that is the difference minor you know they could have differentiated it better and obviously it also shows you here the driving experience control sounds like some formula one car here is actually the navigation data it tells you exactly where which road you are on distance to empty fuel levels this is the speedometer there's a digital speedometer inset the clock okay telltale lights are everywhere and of course gear position indicator which mode you are in right now the ambient temperature and a lot of information which you get right here basically trip data and a tachometer which is not very easy to read because it's counter clockwise for reason best known to bmw and this happens to be the temperature meter of the car now let me show you another cool thing that is hey bmw have a good morning what can i help you with i am feeling hot no problem i will lower the temperature it will be more comfortable shortly this is also very intuitive to use i love this hey bmw thingy okay i just said it now she's going to start and wake up again no she did not she understand that that i'm doing a video right now a vlog actually anyways air conditioning dual zone you get the display in the center here these are the controls for the air conditioning works really nicely these are the controls for the audio system and uh, you know what this is a physical volume control which is also very nice indeed now we're talking about all the buttons here these are for the drive mode this is for auto hold this is the electric parking brake this is the engine start stop button this is for auto stop start this is for parking sensors and this is for traction control system now, these are the controls for the i drive this dial is really very awesome and nice in fact there's so many ways you can actually control this infotainment system right from obviously voice touch i drive controller and gesture too that's super cool gear lever feels nice to hold and uh, that's about it that's the center console not much complex let's get to the display let me get into home now this is the usual display which you've seen millions of times in other bmw cars as well because this is how bmw is working going ahead so what you're going to do is we are going to be getting into car which we were already in settings and you get all the settings here and every time you move now it actually moves the car as well that's super awesome you can control a lot of things as in how you deem fit let's get into driver assistance parking and maneuvering what is interesting is though the interior lighting of the car ambient lighting like i told you there are six colors on offer six colors are 58 colors too less unfortunately but it looks really rad i mean the colors look really awesome because this lightens up that lightens up and you know what let's play an audio right away it obviously gets gesture control there are six gestures actually which also works fluidly well on this car because they have improved it from what it was earlier and let's get into reverse right away now this is the reverse parking camera it gets guidelines which are obviously adaptive and this is the parking sensor which actually dangles and dances every time there's a there's something around you it's also pretty cool on this car so as i see it the 2 series might be a cut price bmw or a cheaper bmw but doesn't feel cheap in any way because the quality levels the fit finish and the feel good factor is really nice okay this lever is only for the indicator meanwhile this bc button is to browse through this yeah you can see on the right side you have a g force meter it's telling how much power and torque you're using in real time as well and obviously comfort and all those modes also are shown right there that's also really nice meanwhile once again to reverse check that okay the rear view mirror actually goes down to tell you that be careful however i'm a bit disappointed that it doesn't get keyless entry rather you have to open the car with a button with a key and also the fact that the audio system is good but not great now this is a 210 watt system in the m sport and uh, it's 100 watt in the lower trim the sport line i think that is not adequate i think it's got 10 speakers but who really cuz you see the cuts and creases they really worked a lot on the aesthetic aspects of this car but we really care about how does it drive so let's get going right away All right, we are all set to go, which means getting the car into reverse. And let me tell you that the steering wheel is actually adjustable both for reach as well as rake, which is a nice touch. Meanwhile, the good part is that mirror. I have already shown you all this, so let's get to the driving experience of the car right away. But we need to give a voice command to this lady. 
hey bmw okay when i'm using the reverse camera it just does not respond and then the reverse camera is activated i think seven kilometers per hour probably here come on camera shut hey bmw sport displays sport displays thank you so much and uh, we are on a really bad patch of road the ground clearance seems to be decent enough doesn't scrape anywhere and uh, the ride is also fine it is on the stiffer side as such yeah it is on the stiffer side which is a bit of an issue over bad potholes as such but for the most part you won't face any issue with the ride of this car the only issue is that the tire size is ridiculous i don't understand why bmw would give us a 40 profile tire on a rather mass market car it makes no sense to me whatsoever the tire profile should have been better it should have been bigger now driving this car is easy because the steering is light and easy to twirl the car is compact visibility is also great but like i told you earlier you have to be super careful over such roads because you're always worried about those m wheels on this car which are so unnecessary the horn is also nice i can't even tell you how unnecessary these wheels are because why would you want 40 profile tires it obviously affects the ride quality but still the ride is good enough and uh, even on bad indian roads you have no problem whatsoever obviously you have to curtail your speed like right now i have done so it moves around a bit because of that stiffness you see that movement is there uh, and uh, this is a light car because it's a front wheel drive car it weighs around 1600 kgs love how easy it is to drive and how compact it is so if you dig compact you will love this bmw 2 series grand coupe okay i don't understand why this coupe does not have the windscreen opening at the rear along with the boot lid of course which is the case with okay all of a sudden why she keeps waking up and making noise so gesture control can be a little bit of a pain in your rear as well yeah so i don't understand honestly that why the boot lid does not open with the rear windscreen which is the case with coupe cars like of course the 6 series as well so that is something which i've been feeling really awkward about since a real long time now and oh my goodness look at this road so you have to be really very careful let's pull into four low okay just kidding there is no four low this is just front wheel drive and you know what the advantages and disadvantages of front wheel drive are very inherent advantages more efficient and lighter cheaper and all those things and of course easier to drive to you won't slide the rear at all but we are in nico mode right now and when in nico mode trust me on this you can realize that the engine is gone for a bit of a nap in this car and that nap is basically because it's trying to conserve fuel in this vehicle okay the stop start system has actually turned off the car and this eco pro mode has a lot of benefits it can actually save up to 20% fuel yeah 20% more efficient in eco pro how is that possible well it decouples the engine it actually says bye bye to the engine so the engine is like coasting the coasting feature actually works between 70 km per hour till 160 km per hour wherein you know it decouples the engine when you know, when you get off the throttle to conserve fuel 160 km per hour coasting mm, i buy that any day fuel economy of this car officially rated i think around 18.46 km per liter in the real world you would expect somewhere between 12 to 14 km per liter which again is extremely respectable from this car and then of course it's a light car with a four cylinder engine there is no petrol engine on offer right now but i am so sure i'm so sure they're going to offer a petrol as well which they will do later right now only a four cylinder diesel engine the same that does duty on the x1 as well as the 3 series so right now we're going to get into sport mode sport for the gearbox traction control sport traction control off completely yeah dsc deactivated left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator driving the motor that's a lot of wheel spin on offer and you see it goes from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 7.5 seconds because this is a light car this four cylinder diesel engine is something we already know about because like i told you it's obviously there in the x1 and the 320d as well produces 190 horsepower at 4000 rpm meanwhile the torque output is a considerable 400 newton meters which comes in at 1750 rpm peaks between 1750 to 2500 rpm and that's the reason why the car is so freaking punchy and fun to drive because this ample amount of grunt on offer turbo lag is well contained power delivery is lean and there's no kick in the pants feel because of bs6 they made it more lean here but it feels very punchy throughout the rev range it's only thing is that you know in the top end it feels a little lackluster but it has a good nice mid range punch and the gearbox is also fast shifting this is a eight speed unit right now we are in sport mode let's get into manual mode the good thing is in manual mode it holds on to a gear and does not upshift which is again a very good thing here check this out we are in m3 okay we should be in m2 actually because it's a two series so we are in m2 right now yeah and here no we still in m3 actually it redlines above 5000 rpm 
which is a really good thing engine refinement is good actually it's great you don't feel the dieselness but you know this is a diesel engine especially at idle you can feel it if you're outside the car you can feel it when you rev the nuts out of the car you can feel it so yeah you do feel that this is a diesel engine but for the most part it's very refined and while cornering if i get into throttle that's the kind of noise it makes sound it makes it's always ready for wheel spin because that's a lot of torque going to the front wheels the front wheels just cannot handle so much torque that's the reason why you need rear wheel drive of course you do need it but that acceleration is of no use when you come to such roads you realize that yeah you have to really slow down it's kind of unfortunate and even though it has really wide tires for a car of this size it still spins its wheels like crazy we don't need front wheel drive we need rear wheel drive trust me bmw enthusiasts and fans are like what a front wheel drive bmw why would they do that and i would be in agreement asking why would they do that Five thousand five hundred RPM is the red line. In second gear, it does seventy-five kilometers per hour. Taking a shift to third to cross hundred kilometers per hour, going hundred and thirteen kilometers per hour, or rather hundred fifteen kilometers per hour in third gear. So gearing is on the taller side, and of course the gear shifts also happen pretty fast. Now this is a fast gearbox. It's smooth. It's slick. and it understands which gear it should put you every given moment the top speed of this guy is a ridiculous 235 km per hour that's a crazy top speed absolutely crazy and how does it achieve it well because of course aerodynamic efficiency air curtains and it has a very low coefficient of drag as well so bmw has really worked on the aero bits of this car and of course given it a really punchy diesel engine this diesel engine is absolutely fantastic it's absolutely stellar of an engine the handling is also pretty good in fact body roll is well contained there is roll on offer but it's well contained the steering has some amount of feel as well and this is a car you would actually enjoy around the corners unless and until you don't push it really hard because push it really hard and of course understeer greets you in plenty crazy amount of wheel spin on offer because of front wheel drive yes that is expected so yeah the bmw 2 series comes across as a very impressive car i didn't think it would be this impressive but it is very impressive because of its lightweight it's nimble it's agile it's fun and this diesel engine really makes the car a whole lot of fun as well the three drive modes on offer there's eco pro there's comfort and there's of course sport all these modes only alter two things the engine and the transmission nothing else there's no adaptive suspension or dampers which by the way is available on global models of course in india they remove as much stuff as possible to come at a more attractive price point but is the price point really attractive when this vlog goes up bmw would have launched this car and i expect the price to be between 37 to 43 lakhs on road mumbai making it around 5 to 7 lakhs cheaper than the bmw 3 series my advice to you get those 5 7 lakhs from anywhere possible take a loan sell a few kidneys which is a very difficult thing and i would not advise you to do so because Because a kidney is an appreciating asset, a BMW is a depreciating asset. So, get the three series. Period. The two series might be impressive and the new entry point for a BMW sedan or BMW as a whole, but the three series is just unbeatable because the interior has more space and, of course, rear wheel drive, better driving balance, and just feels like a BMW. This doesn't feel as much a BMW. Feels more like a Mini. And in that sense, you're like, hmm, why does it have the BMW logo? It's just a way of BMW to. get more volumes for its cars and it's not about bmw it's same as the case with mercedes as well front wheel drive gla cla and all those cars well mm, audi is doing it but then audi does not do rear wheel drive and the fun of a bmw is rear wheel drive if you don't have a rear wheel drive bmw well you don't have a rear wheel drive bmw braking performance is absolutely impressive obviously a bmw car will have great brakes you know there are things you can take for granted with a bmw car like great braking good dynamics and of course randomly spinning its wheels for no reasons whatsoever in spite of having really wide tires as well so as i see it the bmw 2 series is for those who want the bmw badge or the bmw logo in their garage they are much better cars at this price point bigger cars but like i say it and like many of you say it a bmw is a bmw and if you don't drive a bmw well you don't drive a bmw you drive something else yeah i think logically that makes sense braking performance impressive but I love the way it spins its wheels. Look at this, okay? You can actually put a stopwatch and have fun with your friends deciding, I mean having a competition that who spins the wheels for longer 
and on that tire shedding bit it's time to end thank you so much for watching this vlog if you like it make sure to give it a thumbs up that's the like button and also subscribe to the channel i will see you guys in the next video real soon and you know what i love about this car the directional changes are absolutely impressive you can change direction so fast with this car it absolutely maintains its line feels like a bmw in that sense but then like i told you it feels like a mini as well which is not a bad thing at all because of course mini has absolutely nailed the driving abilities just like i want to change a lane it is just so freaking good that your co-passengers actually get shocked and make weird noises as well bye bye